Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to my Behind the Raw series. And this week it's the turn of an episode that I recorded in a location that's kind of special to me. So I visited this location around 10 years ago, and it's when I'm really starting to get into my seascape photography, and more particularly long exposures and the use of my polarizer. And I was blown away back then by how much I could actually see under the water and the effect that the long exposure would have. Now, if you haven't seen that episode, actually, I'll link to it up here. But there's something interesting about that day was it was cloudy here at home but I'm using a new website here by a guy called Christian Elmer and it's called Fortress and it told me that the weather was going to break and break it did but in fact it actually broke too good because I had no clouds I had blazing sun so to be able to do some long exposures with blazing sun and a flat cam ocean was something that I really enjoyed and it was something that was difficult to do but moreover I'm happy with the results that I've gotten. Now I also decided to do something completely different on that episode. I decided to record it as an ASMR video and again if you haven't seen it it'll be linked above here but I'd love for you to watch it and for now we're going to jump onto the computer here and as always I'm going to talk you through my thoughts on the image, my workflow and my editing process. I'm going to go on to Lightroom. Oh yeah by the way uh, it's Lightroom Classic so I had some guy decided that I really offended him because I didn't say Lightroom Classic. So yeah, I'm using Lightroom Classic. So yeah, let's jump on here. Let's go. Okay, so here we are on Lightroom and here is my image. And this is the one that I've chosen to edit. I took only probably around six or eight images actually on that day. But the one I've taken here is my 30 second exposure. I'm at F11 and my ISO is at 50. I was at 16 mil, so I was wide open. And the first thing that I look in relation to this image was I wanted to kind of capture under the water detail here. But as you can see, it's quite bright in regards to the sun. So first thing I might normally do is I'll check for my horizon. So I'm going to come in here and make sure that I get this horizon perfectly straight. Looking at it here, it's slightly off. Um, so I know I'd had a lot of clambering across rocks to be able to reach there, but first thing we're going to do is we're just going to adjust that slightly, usually use lighting these lines here just to make sure that it is going to be straight. And now looking at that, I think that is straight. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing then is I'm going to look and say, okay, what do I want to achieve within the image? Now, for me, I wanted to get it as right as possible in the field. So looking here at the histogram, you can see there's nothing underexposed and there's nothing overexposed. But there is quite a lot of movement to the left-hand side because it's so dark here with the image. So the first thing I want to do is say, okay, where am I going to adjust my image? So if I look at my uh, notes that I would have had here to try and copy in relation to it, okay, so I basically went and adjusted my highlights. I don't necessarily need to adjust my highlights, so I adjusted my highlights down here because if I bring them all the way up here, you see the sky is beginning kind of bright here. So I was kind of right on the cusp of what I could get. Now, if I bring that down slightly, you see I start to get a bit more detail here in the sky. And then on shadows, now if I whack that completely up here, I get all the detail that's over on these cliffs. And if I zoom in to give you a look at these here, um, you know, some really nice detail on these cliffs. And also you've got these old trees that are up on the top, but I don't want to be able to bring it all the way up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to probably around about 60, I think. Um, yeah, I don't want it too bright. If you look at that, it's too bright there. It kind of looks a bit HDR. So I'm going to bring it down to maybe around 60, 62. Then after that, I don't think I need to adjust my whites, but I'll have a look. If I bring them up, you know, it doesn't make much of a difference. It makes the image a small bit brighter. That's okay. And then blacks. So there's a lot of dark areas here within the um, image, and that's where I can adjust those without having to go into the shadows. So I'm going to bring that up here by probably around about 50. And now if you look here, I can see more detail on that, but it's not as HDR looking as you would have if I had gone on the shadows completely. And next I'm going to look at my dehaze. Now, with my dehaze, if you watch this before, you'll see how I use my dehaze to my advantage, be able to find some dust spots. So looking at this image here, it doesn't appear as if there are any dust spots, but if I take my dehaze and I whack it all the way up to 100, now straight away I can see that there is a dust spot up here. So if I scroll to here, there's one. So all I have to do is take this, make my brush just bigger than it actually needs to be. That now is going to take that out of here. And the next is over here. And if I move my image along, okay, I have another one up here, make that smaller. And now, oh, one more 
over here a bit bigger so I think probably it wasn't dust spots it might have been uh, water something or, or dust on the front of the lens so it's not a sensor spot anyway for sure and then this one I know is a sensor spot it's constantly there in my images so I need to clean my sensor um, but at the same point if I know that it's there I can take it out now just looking around the rest of the image here there is no more to be seen and if I check down in the water area here there is none either to be seen there also so now I'll take the image back out and again with the haze if I bring the haze back down you see here that there's no difference in the sky but they're now gone but again I am going to add a small bit of the haze into that image anyway probably go for maybe around about 20 um, and what that's going to do is add a bit more contrast as such into the scene and now when I look at my histogram I've actually gotten more of the detail come into the center here and I'm not blowing any of the highlights so the next thing I want to do is say okay can I bring that up brighter a small bit more so I can bring it to here now that image is only just by 0 0.03 but you can see the difference that it makes if I take that back off again you can see that it's darker but by bringing it up by 0 0.3 it's just enough and I'm not affecting any of the highlights and then finally now the color within the scene is nice and vibrant anyway it was being lit by the sun so the sun was coming from in this direction over here um, and also as well interestingly enough with the 30 seconds there was something moving in the water here and you see it moving around reflecting that light which is actually kind of interesting to look at. So I think, you know, I'm not going to take it out. I'm going to leave it in there anyway. But I'm going to now look at my vibrant. I'm just going to give that a small bit more of a touch. And now it becomes more alive. And then finally, when I look at this image here, what I did like was, you know, you had all these limpets on the bottom down here. And then you could see into this water by removing that glare because that was just pure glare here. But what I don't like is this area and that was seaweed that was moving and it looks dark in the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this to a 16.9 and I'm just going to bring it to here, get rid of the darkness of the uh, seaweed as such. Now it's kind of incidental, it's forgotten about in the image overall. Uh, and then I'm going to just maximize the real estate that I have on that and click on to here. Now, if I look at the before and the after, all of I've, I've done is brighten up the image. I've done nothing really different in the edit, so there wasn't anything complicated to do in this edit, in this edit. But as you can see, all the detail here has come out on the um, cliffs, and I think that's working really, really well. So yeah, I think uh, overall, you know, I really like this image here. Um, it's a nice image. It's one that you know will remind me of what I have done uh, when I, when I actually went to shoot. Uh, in this location like i said from the outset it was one that really appealed to me so um, don't forget to now join me next sunday when i've got a really interesting episode coming when i go to the start of the wild atlantic way the old head of kinsale and i have <laughs> some visitors let's just say they're the coast guard which give me some uh, interesting um scenarios so thank you very much as always for watching hope you enjoyed this episode if it's your first time on the channel please consider hitting the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time, schlange vor.